We're good to go. Well, welcome this evening. Hopefully you're all here to get an upgrade about the CityLink Tuller widening project. If you're not, you probably should be in the basketball game next door or something like that. We're planning to give you an update tonight of where we're at with the project, but in particular have some really good, uh, more detailed discussions about the noise walls, uh, particularly for those residents that are adjacent to the Tuller Freeway and will be mostly impacted by those noise walls. So welcome and I'll just confirm for everyone here that we do have people watching from home, uh, streaming, looking at their computers and we expect that there might be some good questions from those people as well. And because of that, we're obviously recording this session. So please be aware that the session is being recorded. And the other purpose of that is to put it on our website. So you can expect that on our website by the weekend, if you just want to confirm some of the things that we might have said, get a greater clarification. I'm Trevor Boyd and I'm the project director from Vic Roads for this project. Uh, helping me tonight with the presentations, uh, our contractors project director, Rob Maroney, uh, and Ben Oliver from Urban Circus, who specialises in uh, city infrastructure modelling. So you're going to see some videos tonight and uh, an interactive one, which is really quite exciting. And that's all the work that Ben and his company have done. Rob and I will talk a little bit about the project. As I said, we'll show some videos. Uh, ben will talk you through the interactive one. At the end of the night, you might like to have a session where he comes and shows you what it's actually going to look like precisely from your house, your property. And that uh, is available for us. And then we'll finish off uh, with questions. So the project, well, it's a big one. It's uh, 120 uh, $1.28 billion, both the state and the federal government and Transurban are funding this. Vic Roads is responsible for the bit from Buller Road up to Melbourne Airport and that's the section that Lend Lease has got the contract for. We're going to be uh, adding an additional lane in each direction in the, in the centre. We're going to be upgrading interchanges uh, and we're going to be adding a freeway management system. Now the freeway management system is all that electronic stuff that you see on the road in, that, that manages speed limits, that provides um, information to motorists about the, um, uh, the, the uh, access to the freeway, whether it's light, heavy or moderate, uh, and also controls the signals that you might have seen on some ramps to manage the flow of traffic onto the freeway and the merging of traffic um, safely. So the freeway management system is an integral part of these works in order to get in the order of more than uh, 15, 17 minutes saving in travel time, depending on whether you're heading towards the airport or from the airport. So it's quite significant. Doesn't necessarily sound a lot on its own, but if you jump outside, jump in your car and just sit there for 15 minutes, it actually feels a long time if you're not moving anywhere. So that's what we're on about. We're also um, really pleased that it's going to provide more than 1,400 um, indirect and direct jobs as well. Uh, for people both in the area and, and around Victoria. As you might know, we've been working on the project for some time. Most of you have probably had a visit from either the, the project Vic Roads uh, staff or uh, Lend Leases, Rob Maroney's people, uh, to hear a bit about it, to understand uh, what's going to be happening, particularly for those people that are living right next door to adjacent to the Tullamarine Freeway. So what we can see on the map is uh, the blue lines indicate the additional lane, the new lane in each direction in the centre. This is the Micklem Road interchange, so the one that's the most uh, significant to all the people that live in Gladstone Park. The yellow line represents what we call a collector distributor road. And what that's going to do is it's going to collect the traffic that's on the Tullamarine Freeway and the traffic that's on Micklem Road that wants to go to the M80 and you'll travel down there, you'll make your decision before you get to Micklem Road if you're on the Tuller, and then any uh, merging that you do with traffic from Micklem Road is done with less traffic and at a slower speed, 80k per hour, rather than the 100 that everyone's doing on the freeway, and then you'll get down to the M80 and you can choose to either go towards Greensboro or towards Geelong. So that's what we call a collector distributor road, collects the traffic prior to the uh, interchange, 
and then distributes it either east or west on the M80. The blue line underneath, the, uh, the dark blue line underneath the yellow line is the new ramp from Micklin Road to join the Tullamarine Freeway. And so that traffic will not have to weave with traffic that's coming off the Tullamarine Freeway to get to the M80. They will have already got off the other side of Micklin Road and will be on the yellow line. Traffic from Micklin Road will be using the light green line that you can see on the map there. So again, traffic wanting to go from Micklin Road to the M80 will not have to weave with traffic on the Tuller Freeway either. So that's a much safer arrangement. And if, you, if you're familiar with the exit off the Ring Road to Pascovale Road, then that's the same type of arrangement. A separate carriageway, separated by barrier, so that any weaving that happens, happens in that section separate from the higher speed traffic and the higher volume traffic. So it's much safer and, uh, and much more efficient. Keeps the traffic moving. So that's, uh, that's what we're doing, but to um, see what it looks like in 3D, we're going to run a short video now. The CityLink Tuller widening project is underway to provide a smoother, more reliable journey between the CBD and the Melbourne Airport. As part of the upgrade, the Tuller Marine Freeway is being centrally widened north of Melrose Drive to add one lane in each direction. To reduce weaving and congestion at Mickleham Road Interchange, a new elevated lane will link the Tuller to the M80 Ring Road and traffic entering the freeway from Mickleham Road will be able to choose to go to the Tuller City Bound or to the M80. To complete these works over the coming months, there will be ongoing lane closures on Mickleham Road and some ramp closures on and off the Tuller. Delays are expected, so try to avoid the area during peak times or allow extra travel time. For up-to-date information, visit our website and follow us on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram. Authorised by Victorian Government, One Treasury Place, Melbourne. The Mickleham Road interchange lately, you will have noticed that we've already advanced quite a bit and in fact already there's a significant impact in what you're able to do and not able to do in that area. The right turn from Mickleham Road to head towards the city on the Tuller Freeway has been closed in order for Rob and his team to complete uh, the works that are needed for the widening of the Mickleham Road bridges and the construction of the new bridge that will take the collector distributor road across it. So we'll now uh, have a quick look at the noise walls. There are most, uh, a lot of interest to the residents. I can um, tell you that I, I feel that I'm still a bit of a local. Uh, my family home of 42 years was just in the middle of Gladstone Park in a little court called Ardock Court and it was only sold after 42 years last year. So I know the area very well. I uh, remember when Micklem Road was just a two-lane, two-way road. No, none of this duplication and footpaths and all that sort of stuff. And I remember that when the uh, airport was built, the Tullamarine Free was built and this estate was built, that the initial fences along uh, the freeway were paling fences. Uh, timber paling fences, normal house height. And then sometime later they were replaced uh, when Vic Roads was going through a process of um, minimising noise impact on, on residents with new jobs and then retrofitting noise walls for some existing freeways as well. So we've had some timber paling fences there um, for probably longer than we had the original uh, paling fences, we've had the timber noise walls there. They've probably reached the end of their design life, some of them well past their design life, uh, some are rotting quite badly, need to be replaced, it's a bit of a safety issue there as well and of course they're not up to our uh, current standards. Um, so we're going to be building new noise walls um, and this is what they're going to look like, we'll talk more about the detail of that later but let me show you where they're going to go pretty much exactly where they are at the moment. From Micklem Road, each side of the freeway all the way down to Carrick. Uh, you'll notice on the south side, southwest side, uh, uh, south of Carrick, it's mainly industrial, so there's no houses there, there's no red line there. On the uh, east side, south of Carrick, um, 
we already have the noise walls that were part of the M80 ring road upgrade. So the red lines there from Carrick Drive up to Micklem Road um, are the ones that we're going to be building. Um, uh, strong, durable materials and uh, pretty much along the lines that uh, they are now offset a little bit and we'll talk a little bit more about that and, and why they will be offset as well. But they're both sides of the Tuller Freeway. Um, they're going to be concrete panels and, and you can see in that photograph as well as the previous one, the very top part of it to give a bit more light and, uh, and reduce the impact of the height, the visual impact of the height of the walls, the very top section will be a green tinted acrylic, so transparent. You'll be able to see through it, you'll still be able to get light through it, but it's going to um, obstruct the noise. So the existing noise walls in this area are about three to four metres high. Um, no, they're not, they're about two and a half to three metres high, and the new walls will be built to three to four metres high. So in some cases, people will see that the noise wall behind them is about a metre higher than the one that's here at the moment but that very top metre is the clear um, transparent acrylic panel. And you've probably seen examples of those uh, around Melbourne's uh, network. Um, on the, uh, below the transparent panel is the concrete, and that's going to be a charcoal and grey colour on the freeway side. And our architect has helped us with a couple of different colours that might be suitable for the residence side but we're not going to be living there. Once we've completed this upgrade, you are going to be living there and so we're going to provide some options to everyone and get a, not a consensus as such, but we're going to get an understanding from the residents as to what might be suitable for you. So effectively, the residents will be deciding what the colour will be on the house side of the, um, of the noise walls. So what I'll do now is I'll introduce Ben Oliver. Ben's from uh, Urban Circus, as I mentioned. They do a lot of work for um, uh, the transport industry, uh, as well as others in modelling the impact of uh, infrastructure. And we've got an interactive video, and Ben will talk us uh, through that as well. Thank you, Trevor. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, just had a small crash. So while I load that up, I'll, I'll talk about the model that we've developed. Uh, Lendlease have uh, provided us with the, uh, uh, with the data needed to visually represent uh, the noise walls in 3D space. Uh, the video interactive uh, in those terms is actually a real-time uh, interactive environment, similar to Street View, Google Earth, or something you may have seen before. Uh, and we'll use this environment to assess everyone's um, visual impact from your actual residence and we'll look at the um, space itself so that has more or less finished loading so if I slowly spin around here and here is our model so I'll just talk about its functionality and you guys can have a think about what you might like to see um, throughout tonight's presentation and later on. Uh, we can go through specific, uh, specific points um, uh, by request as needed. I'll just quickly play this camera path I already set up. So we have everyone's uh, residence modelled. Uh, this is based on some point cloud data. Uh, we don't have things like windows and small cutouts and verandas and some people's sheds, but uh, the footprints are accurate. Uh, your roofs are just basic shapes, just, just so that we can get an accurate gauge on um, what these walls will look like from your residence. So that's it there. So I'll just pick uh, any rent. So I've got, we've got all the addresses here laid out, just a general location. I'm just going to pick someone random, maybe someone here, I'm not sure. But this will just whip us to the backyard. Do you recognise your shed? 
These are base, just uh, basic forms at the moment so you can gauge what's going on behind the nose walls. Uh, eye view is set up to an average of 1.7. Some of you I notice are a lot taller than that, some are shorter, so it's just to get a general idea. Uh, so for example, from this address, you can see that you can see a light pole. That's about it of the freeway. Um, we'll go through everyone's uh, individually if needed. What we can also do is move further along the freeway and maybe we'll just pick we'll just pick a view let's say this guy right here quickly just jump into this driver's point of view this is traveling along the collective distributor collected collective distributor uh, the new road heading across so you can get an idea of the view um, from a driver's perspective, as we head across. Yes, yes. This is travelling southbound. Why do you need that new road for? Why oh, do you need that whole new separate road for? Uh, do you want to speak? Oh, look, I'll address that once we've gone through this. That's a really good question. So you know, that keeps going all the way up to Carrick Drive. Uh, if it's required, uh, one of the other things we can look at, if you guys are interested, uh, is the uh, kind of the shadow casting. Uh, some people might be interested. Um, some not, so you can have a look at kind of what that does to a backyard. I think something that uh, we wanted to point out, which I think this 3D is good at showing, if I can find a spot. Where's our line work? All right, what you might be able to find when you uh, come, and, come and see it up close and personal, uh, we have the cadastre boundary uh, where your current fence line sits. Uh, and within the model, it shows that in the large majority of cases, you actually gain more backyard. Uh, so this can be visible uh, through here, uh, which was also uh, visible in that past slide, we can show you the uh, image within the uh, PowerPoint presentation, which shows that extra gain uh, in that in those backyard areas. How much would that be in the OD? Half a metre or between uh, half a metre and a metre, yep. depending where it is. Yeah, depending yeah, where it is. That's not subject to adverse possession laws, is it? Or if it, uh, it, it, it stays fairly consistent. Away, reserved, doesn't it? I'll let Trevor, Trevor's going to talk about that a little bit later on. Mm. Yeah. No, but yeah, Trevor will address those sort of concerns later on. Yep. That's right. So that, that's our model. Uh, in general, uh, I think uh, we can have a look in more detail um, as, as little groups later on if we like. Can we jump into a car and have a look at the trip from Micklem Road turning left onto the ramp and heading um, to either choose to keep left to go down to the ring road or keep right to join the Tuller Freeway traffic? Yeah, not a problem. Uh, which one? It's somewhat random. I'll just I'll just pick this little guy here. It'll either go one way or the other. <laughs> so turning left, you can see two lanes there. At the moment, there's one lane at Micklin Road. Two lanes. Two lanes continue, and then you either go left to join the collective distributor or head to the right. This car is going to the left. Now it will. Uh, mix with traffic that's coming down the collective distributor road that has come onto it from the Tyler Freeway. 
So every, every vehicle that's on this road now is going to go either left or right onto the ring road, east or west. Their ability to go on the Tuller has now been removed. And you've got the barrier there on the right that uh, protects them from the faster traffic. So as with the Pasco Vale Road exit, um, you will make your decision well before Micklem Road. With Pasco Vale Road, you make the decision well before the Tuller Freeway interchange. And then you are just mixing with the volume of traffic and the speed of traffic that wants to go to the ring road. What's that, what's that little bit of a gap there for at the end? That's there. a good question. That's not intended to be a gap, so right. there will be a barrier there. <laughs> no, you, can, you can nick across at the last few minutes. So yeah. if, we can, if we can now go back, Ben, and have a look at uh, and hope that we get a car that goes right and joins the Tuller Freeway. No worries, what am I It's 50-50. It is, it is, it's 50-50. Uh, let's see, I, don't, I have a feeling this guy will go. So traffic on the Tuller Freeway that wants to get off of the ring road is already on the collector distributor road now. Now this car is heading so to the right rather than the left, goes under the collector distributor road and now will just merge with traffic that's on the Tuller. So it's not mixing with any traffic that was on the Tuller or was on Micklem Road that's wanting to go to the is ring road. Is that going to the airport, is that one way to the airport? This is heading towards the city, I'm sorry, I should have explained the direction. So heading towards the city, we now have a typical ramp to freeway merge arrangement where the, these cars, like the one in blue that we're travelling in, now will merge with the traffic with its own lane to start with um, and with the Tullamarine freeway traffic. So things like this collector distributor road, the extra lane and the freeway, electronic freeway management system, they all work to pretty much answer the question, why, why do you need the collector distributor? If we don't have all of those, we only have some of the elements, then you will still have traffic banking up to Melbourne Airport and, and it's only going to get worse with development continuing um, in, the, in the outer areas of Melbourne. And the traffic uh, speed and volume and wanting to make uh, choices about going left or right uh, creates a lot of turbulence on the freeway. And it's often the turbulence, people either not keeping to their lane or people slowing down because of a truck or another car in the lane next to them and then they're not being comfortable at continuing at the speed that they were or the speed that you're allowed to do and you just get that turbulence that makes the traffic flow break down. And then you get the shockwave effect. And that's when you get the stop start, you get to the end of a queue, then it gets going again. Then you get to the end of the queue, then it gets going again. And that's because of the shockwave that's due to turbulence. We reduce the turbulence and reduce, eliminate the, uh, the interaction of the traffic by putting some of it on the collector distributor road, the traffic that wants to go to the ring road. So, I'll have a chat to the chap that had to step out then and try and explain that a bit more too if, if we need to. If anyone would like to have Ben show them their own property, we can um, do that tonight or we can do it separate to this evening as well such that you can, you know, in the comfort of your home or whatever, we can make arrangements for you to see what it's going to look like. Now, if I was looking at that, I'd say, crikey, there is this, there is this big noise wall at the back of my property. Well, there is a big noise wall at the back of the properties right now. It's about uh, two and a half to three metres high, approximate measurements, and it's timber and it's starting to fall apart in some locations. We're replacing that with the noise wall that you saw there and the top bit, which is the bit that is a bit higher than what everyone is looking at at the moment, is a bit that's the clear, transparent acrylic panel. Any further questions on that? Because there were some really good questions about what the traffic does and how it operates. The emergency lanes are gone, right? Uh, not, entirely. not entirely. Not entirely. Okay. And that wall, we were led to believe, was going to be timber. Is that right? Or is it all concrete? It's concrete. So 
Uh, no, I was talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Were you here? Uh, we had a knock on the door and uh, we were talking about it. I rang up and they told us it's not the but it's concrete. It's concrete. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, then we were misinformed. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry if you have been misinformed. I know that the teams yeah. have been talking with residents for more than a year now and our initial contacts and visits to people's houses would have been talking at a time when plans were at concept stage. Prior to Rob and the contractor, his team coming on board and detailing uh, the designs and finalising them. So. Uh, there may have been a time that, for whatever reason, I don't know why our, our team has indicated a timber noise wall, two but weeks ago. for two weeks ago, yep. well, I don't understand that because for so, quite some time we have uh, quite definitely been proposing concrete walls here, which, which will last, well, we designed structural elements for 100 years. Uh, there's been two timber walls here previously and, and the freeway was only built in the... 60s, late 60s, something like that. So um, these walls are going to outlast any timber wall that we could put there How long now. There? I'm sorry? The fence that we got now. The fence that we got now. How many years? 30 years. 30? Yeah. 30. yeah. 30. It would be. I was still yeah. fantastic. Very good. So I'm not shocked. Not 30. <coughs> no. 30 years. 30. Yes. Yes. We've been here 31 years. Yes. The year after we moved in, right. yeah. the paling fence was knocked down. Yes. The 2.4 metre fence was put up. Yes. Yes. So, so also on the other side, yeah. they've not yeah. 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 Oh, they must have done them at different times years. then. Because yeah. our side, the hands were present. It's 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. I think they have been different yeah. times yeah. for each side of the freeway, but both of them have been there longer than the original yeah. um, house paling fence. Yeah was there. Now I do know that some of the timber fences have uh, lasted much better than others, yeah. but, but some yeah, of them are in quite... Very, very good. Ours they are. I was shocked to, to see them going because... Okay. Yeah, well, are. if yeah. you've got a use for the timber... Um, no, no, thank you. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Question? Well, the new uh, distributor road, yep. what's the peak height of that? Uh, that's a good question. I actually did have that and it's just slipped my mind. Our designers... The elevated road? Is that the yeah, the collected yeah, distributor yeah. road. Uh, yeah. What's the highest point of that? So it's the same height as the existing Micklin Road Bridge because it needs to maintain the same And that is? So it's 6 metre clearance, 5.4 metre clearance underneath, so probably about another metre and a half above that will be the, the surface. Right, so the where you saw the blue car <coughs> head off to the yeah. right and go under a bridge, that's the highest point? And so that's that's the about five to six. Start going down immediately after far. that. Immediately yeah, after how, that. How far are well, let's 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 drive the bit from um, the Tullamarine Freeway from the Melbourne Airport towards uh, the city uh, along that route, and we'll you should see a noticeable drop in the grade of the uh, carriageway. Is that clear? So no, on the on the Tuller, on the Tuller north of Micklem Road. Heading towards the city. Okay, so this is, um, we're coming up to Micklem Road. Well, this is the teller. We wanted the actual collector distributor, that's right. Let's, let's finish this. So this is travelling. We haven't done this one yet. So on the teller freeway, three lanes. At the moment, there's two lanes on the Micklem Road bridges in each direction, that shows that there'll be three once we've completed the work. And the collector distributor road is on the left there. So we'll go back now and we'll uh, select a vehicle that wants to, that gets off the Tullamarine Freeway onto the new collector distributor road. So you can see, you may, you'll have to make the decision well before Micklem Road. <clears throat> We're in the blue car again, it's doing loops. So Micklem Road exit on the left and we're now going up over Micklem Road on the collector distributor road. So this is about the highest point here going over Micklem Road and you can see it's starting to drop uh, pretty quickly. Can I ask the question why the standard road looks as though it's lower than, than the 
it doesn't come down as quickly as the toll ramp freeway. Because it's got to get over the ramp coming onto the freeway. Uh, my point was how far down after the bridge is it still at bridge height? So if we zoom out, Ben. Here we go. So it's basically staying, this is Mickleham Road here, it's basically yeah. staying at the same height, coming down slightly to about here. Because it's got a, there's a, a ramp coming underneath that. So, so and then it starts coming down with the freeway. So how many houses are impacted by the height of that past that point? in their backyard. Well, you can you see them there. Scale higher than the yeah. existing road. Yeah, you can see in there whether or not yep. you're picking the, from the corner or yep. or some point where you get to the highest. It's in the order of six to eight, ten maximum houses that have got that maximum elevation of the collector distributor road. So I'm sorry. Will the walls be bigger? So you won't have high, so you won't see in their backyards? You won't see in their backyards. So the walls will be high enough there to protect the noise. And I think <coughs> as we saw in that car when we were driving it, you actually couldn't see down into the backyards. Do we want to have another look at one of those? Jump in the car? Blue again, they're popular. <laughs> so we're in the left lane of the collector distributor going over Micklem Road and you can see the rooftops. That's a very low car you've got <laughs> driving there. Oh, it's a standard I've car. I've got a Ford Territory and it's twice the size as that. Any other questions while we've got the... Yeah, I think it should be a bit higher because I can see in Monash Freeway the sound barrier is much higher. There, than there are lots of roads around Melbourne where the actual visual, um, the ability to see over fences and into houses and backyards does exist. Vic Roads doesn't normally build uh, visual screens. Uh, they're noise barriers. So the noise barrier has been determined for a height to protect the residents from the noise levels. But I think it should be a bit higher than that, than what you're suggesting Can we come and talk with you about your particular property and, and show you what it will actually look like from both sides, the freeway and also the backyard side, and, and, and just see what that's going to look like? I think the truck. Oh, no, but I'm not on the, we can have road exactly, I am further down, but I can't, well, now, further I can down, the noise all, all the time, I yeah. can hear the noise from the cars. Oh, you're talking about noise now, further down it will be even um, less easy, it will be more difficult to see in backyards further you go along that collector road anyway. I'm getting a bit of a wind up from the production crew here, so one more question then we might keep moving. We do have time for questions at the end as well. I live on Queensland Court, my back fence is on the freeway, here. Yeah. Since I've taken the, the trees down, the noise is horrendous, and I've got three extra lanes going behind my place. You're going to have noise walls that will provide a lower noise level than what you're currently experiencing. Do they come back in later on in a few, after it's been open, a couple, say 12 months or so? Yes, we do plan to do after uh, noise Check measurements. On the noise level there. Absolutely. Right. Yep. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. Right, we might get a, a wriggle on. If you can just save your questions, we will have time at the end. Um, if we just, we'll stop this and go to the next slide. We've got a photograph of um, the noise walls that some of you would be familiar with that live adjacent to the freeway. The timber one on the left, this is equipment um, that's been used as part of the tree removal. The photo on the right is really just to let let you understand and appreciate that where trees need to be protected we do take steps to cordon them off and retain them and protect them and look I do know I do know that some people really value the trees and it doesn't matter what sort it is and what size it is it's really important to them and other people really don't like them and would prefer that we rip them all out 
We can't do that. We've got to get approval to touch a single tree. So the trees that have been removed are the ones that have needed to be removed in order to do the upgrade. And if they haven't been required to be removed for the upgrade, well then they will be remaining because we just can't get approval to pull them down or cut them down just because people don't like trees. If they need trimming anyway, if they need, if they need trimming because of branches overhanging the fences, please let us know and we will come and do some pretty we have aggressive that. trimming. We have actually several times run because and complained because the gutters have been blocked. But nothing has been done. Give me your uh, details after this and I'll make sure it's done very soon. Okay? Absolutely. So what I'd like to do now is to invite our contractors project director, Rob Moroni from Lendlease, to just give us a bit of information about the construction programming, the timing, what you can expect uh, moving on uh, from now. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Trevor. And feel free to ask questions, but as Trevor said, there's questions at the end. And also I invite you to stay afterwards. We've got a team of engineers and VicRose project team members here to get up, have a look at the photos on the wall and ask questions, particularly bother Ben as well. Really ask the questions tonight. This is where you get most of your information. Um, but I'll just give you a high level overview of the program of works with the noise walls. So as the team would have spoken to you over the last few weeks is we're gonna get out there and start doing some of the early piling works actually starting next week behind the noise walls. So the noise walls are gonna stay there in place at least for the next four or five months we're not going to touch them, but we're going to start doing our early piling works now and do that work deliberately behind the noise walls. So we're not taking them down the interim. You're not going to see construction equipment or anything else like that. The noise walls stay in place. They'll be working there. They'll be working there behind. Correct. Exactly right. Well, just like we already are down near the Micklin Road intersection. Um, so we're going to start on the, on the inbound noise walls, if you like. So where we are at Micklin Road heading into the city, that's where we're going to start doing the noise walls first of all. And really that'll start uh, in the coming weeks and really those noise walls are aiming to have those all finished by the middle of 2017. So middle of next year that'll all be finished. And then uh, middle of next year we'll start on the uh, noise walls outbound on the other side of the freeway and finish those by probably the end of 2017, uh, early 2018. If we flick to the next side. Um, again, as I said before, again, most of the, the works will be done from the freeway side of the wall. So as you would have experienced if you were here uh, 31 years ago when the noise walls were put up originally behind the timber paling fences, we're going back there again. So we can do all our works and there's a gap of about half a metre or a metre from your existing noise wall to the new ones. So that's been done very deliberately by Vic Roads to minimise any inconvenience to yourselves. So you're not having to put up with us coming along, pulling down the noise wall having a temporary noise wall, having fences in the way, bits and pieces, things like that. So very deliberate action by Vic Road. So I applaud those for making your life easier and making my life easier as well. Um, again, as the, uh, our team would have told you, as they would have door knocked you, is we'll come and speak to you over the next few weeks, next few months, just about what you individually require for when we actually do need to demolish those noise walls. So we will need access into the back of your house at some stage to do that. But everyone's got a different um, issue in the backyard, whether it's a dog, young kids, things like that. When you remove the existing fence, how are you going to take it out? Uh, well, there's two ways we can take them out. We can leave part of our new noise wall off, so we can go along and do all our foundations, do the whole noise wall, and just leave part of it out, and then demolish it from the freeway side, leaving a temporary fence in the way, so security to your house, or we can do it from your side, depending on access and whether that inconveniences you or not. And how is it going to be from one house to another, closing? Very good question. So there will be gaps. So because we're putting the noise wall half a metre or a metre back, there will be a gap, as you may have seen on some of the slides and some of the photos here. We'll come into each house and build that extra half a metre or a metre to close that gap so you're not having access to your neighbour's property. So we'll do that. We'll provide a temporary fence there as well before we've done that. And I acknowledge everyone's got a different fence. No, everyone doesn't have a standard timber paling fence. If someone's got a colour bond fent or something like that, we'll make sure it's like for like, things like that. And if you got uh, this lady next to me here, she did a build, she bought a house and they got a fence, a shed attached to the fence. Yep. What's going to happen there? 
Well, talk about Trevor will talk, but, but again, that's part of our engagement. Everyone's got a different scenario at their house. <laughs> so Trevor will talk about that in a second. But again, I just employ you, the team will talk to you over the next few months and we'll only come and, and touch those noise walls when you allow us to. You know, we can't go in there and start demolishing anything. Again, Vic Roads will keep us honest as well. So that's a commitment certainly from Lynn Lease and Vic Roads. If we jump to the next slide, um, again, what you'll expect over the, over the coming months, you've already seen us out there doing some works around Micklem Road, and again, typical construction works, and that's part of the reason why we're leaving the noise walls in place. A uh, little bit of noise, occasionally minor bits of vibration, but we'll monitor that ourselves as well, the vibration gauges when we do that. And again, one of the big issues we'll see again coming to the um, summer months is dust. So we'll have water carts out there, things like that. Uh, with dust, we've got a few dust monitors around the, the product as well. Again, just so we know if we've got a problem with dust. That, and particularly over the Christmas break when we close down, all our guys go on holidays for two or three weeks, we'll certainly have uh, water carts out here every day, uh, keeping the dust down and also just in terms of security as well, monitoring the project. Um, and again, most of the work on the noise walls will actually be conducted uh, during normal hours. So that'll be during the week from the hours of 7 o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock at night and on Saturdays in that first part of Saturday, generally from 7 o'clock till 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Generally it won't be night works actually physically working on those noise walls. You said it won't be night works? Generally it won't be night works doing the noise walls. There may be a pinch point where we can't put a panel in because during the day or something like that, but we'll come and speak to you about that if we need to. But generally speaking, most of the noise walls will be put up during the day. Again, from the, the question earlier on, when we go through and take away the, the existing noise walls, we need to close that gap, that last half a metre or, or metre of gap. Um, and again, that's part of security for yourselves. I think that's about it. And then, yeah, Trevor's here then to speak about some of those issues related to that extra piece of land, that extra half a metre, uh, metre of land. If there's any other questions for myself? The concrete, the, the concrete panels, are they going into the channel lines? Are they set, driven down by a pylon or are they sitting on concrete? So what there actually is, there's, there's concrete piles here, so there's concrete footings here. Yeah. Then these are actually steel posts. Yeah. Steel, channel, steel channels bolted just central. bolted into the concrete. And then concrete panels just put in between the steel posts with the acrylic panel at the top. Yeah. When you get somebody inside that has to go in your property, do they have to, what did they do with the old fence? Will they saw it down or just lift it out with a crane or whatnot? Because well, this other lady I've got a forgot fence that she has right on the top. We'll probably, it's nearly touching, it's not connected to it. But it's <coughs> we'll come in and basically demolish it and it'll be different ways with cranes with chainsaws, other bits and pieces, however best to do it. Building things on it's supposed to be an easement. Exactly right. But that's part of the reason we'll come and visit you yeah. over the next few months so we know exactly how to tackle each property because some aren't going to be straightforward. Yeah. Exactly. So what Rob's committing to is that we're going to come and talk with each property owner individually about your fence and the arrangements to build a new one in relation to your situation, whether it be children, dogs, sheds, veggie yep. gardens or whatever, it doesn't matter. And the timing, night works, day works, uh, we're going to work in with you. And we know that there are some properties where there is a shed there and the noise walls right there. Um, and there may be somewhere they're actually either attached or side by side. We're not going to be pulling anyone's sheds down. We're not going to be ripping up anyone's veggie gardens. But we will be removing the existing fence. Now, my understanding of what happened in the first place is that uh, the timber paling fences that were erected, Vic Roads came along at some stage and decided to put up noise walls, the ones that are there at the moment. And rather than pull down the uh, paling fence and then replace them with a noise wall, the noise wall was built about a half a metre to a metre away from the existing fence, which meant that there was no disturbance to residents at that time. And some of those paling fences still exist. 
Some of them still exist. Some of them are in poor state of repair. And in other examples, residents have removed them for whatever reason. And that's OK, because we would have had difficulty maintaining a half a metre to a metre strip between the paling fence and the current timber noise fence. But that bit of land is actually Vic Road land. And in some cases, people have built a shed on that bit of Vic, Vic Road land, or veggie gardens, or playground equipment, or whatever. And some people in this room may have come and bought that house with it in that situation, not necessarily realising. Even though it should be clear on the plans, it may not have been obvious. Now, we understand that, we appreciate that. There isn't an easement set up, and we don't intend to set up a, an easement for this exercise. But what we're looking at is that we've got an existing noise wall, and we plan to build another one. So it'll be the third fence in this location. One of the options to us is to pull down the existing timber fence and over a number of months build a new fence on the existing line. Now, if you think the noise is a problem now, the noise would be horrific in that situation and we think that that's unacceptable. And so we're not going to do that. We're requiring Rob and his team to build the new fence while the existing fence still stays there to provide some noise protection until the new one is built. <coughs> so that means eventually when Rob and his team pull away the existing fence and you've got the nice new one there providing much better noise attenuation, some people will have another half a metre or 400 millimetres of land. <coughs> and the question is, well, what do we do with that? Pardon? It's not our land. It is not your land. But you know what? I'm happy to go on record of saying we're happy for you to use it as if it's your land. But we don't we don't want you to we don't want you to build any new sheds on it. We don't want you to build any structures on it that might be difficult or expensive for you or us to remove. Because at the end of the day, I'm not going to be here in 30 years' time, and some of you may not be in 30 years' time, but someone will be in living in your house, and they will need some level of protection. So what we're proposing to do is to provide every resident that backs onto the fence a letter that's designed to protect both, both Vic Roads and the resident to say that we're happy for you to use that land. But please don't build a shed on it, all right? <laughs> Plant your veggies. If you want to throw some of the veggies our way, that's fantastic. But but do whatever you like on that bit of land. We're not going to create an easement. We're not going to sell it to anyone. Um, and we really, really don't want to have a legal agreement as such with you that you think or feel necessary to run through solicitors. By all means, the letter that we come and talk with you about, if you feel like you need legal advice for that, by all means, please do so. But we can't, prov we can't fund that legal advice. But it's basically going to say something along the lines of, here's the extra bit of land, we're happy for you to use it, please don't build anything on it. And, and it's just to let you know that it is our land, but Vic Roads actually in writing agrees for you to use it. So it's, 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 sort, of a, it's a sort of a legal agreement that's not paying a whole lot of solicitors a lot of money to write, if that makes any sense. Does that solve your shed issue? That was uh, the tin. Does it solve the issue? Is that I don't know how they're gonna do. They can cut the, the piece of timber from the shed. And it's the tin. I tell you what will happen. Rob will come around and he'll personally come and talk with you about your particular block <laughs> and the fence <laughs> and the shed. And I, I bet you he will come up with a solution that you're happy with. Guaranteed. <laughs> You, you've got about fence. 60 witnesses here. <laughs> and that might be the option to leave that part of the old fence there so can that you? the shed stays as is. Oh, we can look cool. at those things. And, and look, some people may prefer us to leave the current fence there. The only problem with that is who ma maintains a bit in between the two. But um, if that's a localised option to best suit the needs of, of any particular resident, we, we absolutely would consider that. So we are going to work with every resident. Uh, we will not be pulling down any sheds, even though some of them we know are built on Vic Grove's land now. Whether you've done it or previous residents have done it, we really don't care. Uh, we're happy for you to use the land, but please don't build any more. What happens to the extra bit of land between the current existing fence and your new fence? There will be like grass and holes. 
Well, uh, topsoil, yes. So yep. Rob will make sure that that's levelled, uh, tidy, topsoiled. Um, if you'd like him to throw some grass seed in it. You might not want grass seed because if you're planning to plant more veggies, then you wouldn't want the grass seed. So again, he'll, yep. he'll talk with it. Don't ask him to paint it. Thank you, Trevor. <laughs> at the moment, if you get up and have a look at the fence, like a dog's leg, it's all over the place. Will it be one straight line or will it still follow the same dog leg? It will not be a dog's leg, uh, but there may be a... Smoothing uh, of yeah, that a line. A smoothing. Yep. It, so there will be some deviations in the line, but they're over a long length. They're not individual yeah. Yeah. kinks. That's so why some people out. will have 400 mil, some people will have maybe a metre. At maximum, just to try and smooth it. Three or four metres. Being the gateway to <laughs> Melbourne. Melbourne the, most Australia, the world's I, most livable city. Yeah, I so could have a toll. A toll? No, this is not sure. going to be a toll. This is not <laughs> absolutely no, so no toll. From Melbourne us. Airport down to Buller Road, it's the section that the state and Vic Roads is looking after and maintaining and upgrading. And there'll be no toll on there. Yeah, it won't be a toll at all. South of Buller Road, you've got a toll. <laughs> Any other questions? We've still got one more video to go through. I was just um, going to ask about um, our, from Mickleham Road heading toward the airport. Have, have we looked at, is there any changes in the way we join the um, Tullamarine Freeway from Mickleham Road to go to the airport? There'll be an extra lane, so there'll be we three. We haven't really looked at that. Uh, we have. Oh, we haven't looked at that tonight. No, we haven't. Um, I'm not sure of the. It, it's on the interactive. So perhaps after the session, we can go through that for you. But it'll basically be three lanes on the freeway heading north, with um, the on-ramp uh, entering. And if you notice all the new ramps on the M80 ring road, they're about three to four times longer than what they were in the initial construction. So we we will be making that much longer as well. We have a question from online, so we'll just um, see what Danielle is asking. Uh, Danielle is saying, hi, hi Danielle. Uh, how can I give input on the colour of the noise walls? Um, and thank you for a great presentation um, and the live stream, Ben and Rob. Well, the noise wall colour will be something that the residents that, are, that abut the Tullamarine Freeway will make the decision on. And so we will be door knocking um, every one of those and saying, look, here, here's, here's the race. We're not going to have 12 different colours. You know, there may be three or four, two, two. there's two, two, two colours. They're up on the wall. And, and we've got them on the wall tonight. So the, just uh, in the right hand bunch of plans there. So Danielle, you'll be able to see these colour patches when we come and visit your place on the assumption that you're living along the Tullamarine Freeway. We'll show them to you and you'll be able to say, look, I prefer that one over that one. And majority rules to democracy. <laughs> oh, we've got a bit of a debate now about whether it's a democracy or not. Thanks, Dale, <laughs> now. I appreciate that. More questions? Question which is not quite related. But just on the question of graffiti on some of these walls, which we have in the neighbourhood and have always had, um, is that an ongoing, um, will it be cleaned up fairly quickly, an ongoing protection against that? We'll certainly do the best that we can. Um, our chief executive started with us about two, two and a half years ago at a time when Vic Roads had a policy to remove any offensive graffiti within 48 hours. And the chief came in and said he thinks that all graffiti is offensive. So since then we've had a really strong campaign to um, remove graffiti as quickly as we can. And if you drive the M80 ring road very much, you'll notice that it's a very clean freeway in that respect. Every now and then some graffiti appears and it doesn't take too long to remove it. Unfortunately, it's not cheap to do that, but we think it's worthwhile because the upgraded sections of the M80 is being put up as world class freeway. That's from the roadside, what about from well, Elmhurst Park? Okay, so on your side, if it's your own property, we expect that you'd look after that. For where it goes along the parks, or then Vic Roads will be responsible for that as well. So we can give you the details of our region to make sure that you, you can ring someone up whenever um, it's a problem. Could I ask a question? Yes. Um, 
So I just asked the question, uh, you might not know this, but in Western Australia, they have very little graffiti or, or I've just been over to Perth and it's beautiful in Queensland. They have no graffiti, no signatures anywhere. And yet in Melbourne, we have it everywhere. <laughs> Is it to do with the penalties? Or? I actually don't know what the statistics are, but my daughter and grandson live in Perth and I visit there frequently as well. And it is a beautiful city. It's not quite the livable city that Melbourne is, but it does seem to have less graffiti than, than we have. I don't understand why. I'm actually visiting uh, some of the managers over there in three weeks' time with their roads department and talking about consultation and engagement with the community but I also intend to talk with them about what they do to prevent graffiti. Since um, the gateway into Melbourne, are they going to keep the, the maintenance down on the lawn, the grass and everything like that? It's shocking the way some of it is. It's, it's a challenge, particularly when you get a, a winter and a spring like we've had with a lot, of, a lot of moisture, so the grass grows really quickly. Across the whole state, the grows struggles to keep up with the maintenance. Um, and we get, we get funding for new works and we uh, try and do the best we can to channel as much funding as we can into maintenance as well. And given that it's the entrance that a lot of people, it's the first visibility they have of Australia, not just Melbourne, they get off an aeroplane and they come down the Tullamarine Freeway, it is pretty important to make that uh, uh, continue to look uh, pr pretty good. So and overall the east side of the city, it's Freeways are good. This one's the worst. In oh, I think I think they all uh, have their fair share of suffering from the challenges that we have of, of maintenance and grass cutting. I think you look after the east more than this side of town. <laughs> we, we, we actually get that challenge a lot of times, but I'm not sure it's actually correct. And we've got a lot of good examples of Deer Park bypass, some fantastic noise walls there. If we were a swinging a swinging uh, seat. We get a lot more protection from everything. Yes, we, we, we hear that a lot too, so I understand what you're saying. Are there any more questions? Because we did tell people that are streaming in, like Danielle, that we would be going until 7.30. Um, happy to take more questions and for you to stay and talk with any of the people that look like they're not a resident. In other words, they've got, oh, I've put mine away, they've got a lanyard around their neck. Um, or some kind of a name badge to indicate that they're with Vic Roads or Lendlease. Please, for you to talk more with us and stay for a cup of tea if you want. Any final questions? Just a quick one. Coming up Nicklin Road to the north where you're turning to Gladstone Park and it's Ryland not the Drive. official detour and they're doing the U-turn to go down onto the Tuller. That, there's going to be a nasty accident yes. somewhere. They really need, for the duration yes. of the work, no U-turns there. It's, it's, it's a shock. Okay, we've, 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 got, we've got some pretty experienced traffic engineers in the project, so if you think that that's a problem, I'll have them uh, yep. look at that and, and make sure any safety concerns are addressed. Yep. Uh, one more and then one down there. Pedestrian crossing? Was that a...? Pedestrian crossing, you blocked off the inlet to the freeway. Yeah. Yes. So if you're on Middle Road, going to the Western Park Shopping Centre, there's that in intersection there, there's no pedestrian crossing, so someone's going to be hit there. Oh, there, there is. We've provided for pedestrian, but it's a bit longer than it was before. Now, now if it's not clear where to go, we can um, show you on the map tonight yep. where the pedestrian paths are. So, But because some of the works have blocked off um, where some of the cars can go, then the pedestrian access has changed a bit. So we can yeah, show you the detail of that. The signage, yes, if, look, if the signage is inadequate, we can because address you that me as well. Help people who aren't here. Well, we'll look at that as well as show you. The signage um, probably needs to be more permanent, actually, on the pedestrians, because moving them off the road again and put them back on the sidewalk as we drive out the place is not the best. Okay, we got that noted. Yep. Yeah, just that um, turning right onto Glaston Park Drive from Micklem Road, where you've got the no no U-turn sign. Um, the other day I was turning right, and the four cars in front of me did U-turns. 
And the, and the last guy went around the corner, looked at me and gave me the bird. <laughs> now, can something be done to, because that, that is some, that's going to cause accidents. We, we, we can talk to the police and we do often about specific works that need uh, more attention, but un unless it's a, a real safety issue rather than a damn annoyance because they're doing u turn when they shouldn't be, then the, the police are more interested in coming out and helping us with enforcement. So we'll have a look at that as well and yeah, see if it's something. What you want is people to go right down to the roundabout, isn't it? And then yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. come back, but people aren't doing it. No, Can I understand. just ask what the camera is yeah. for in the middle of the, the island now looking down instead of Rob? looking back the other way? Uh, the camera, I think that's the camera you're talking about, is a time lapse, time lapse camera. Okay. So it takes a photo every, <laughs> I'm not sure, every 15 minutes or something like that. So then we can get a picture of the works building up at the at the end. Okay. So it's purely just so we can look back and look at the construction works, how it started from day one to later on in the project. And that's the sort of video that we'd put on our website as well, so you can see it. Question? What are you doing near at Fuller Road? Uh, the Buller Road interchange is, that's where Lend, uh, Lend -Lease, Transurban are doing the work and their contractor, CPB contractors. Uh, they're actually narrowing the freeway. I'm just wondering why they're narrowing the freeway. Uh, ultimately it won't be. It'll, be. it'll be more lanes than it is currently and there'll be a collective distributor. Well, they've built a great big over uh, ramp. Buller Road, uh, yeah. Buller Road to Bell Street ramp, mm. hard up against the existing emergency stopping lane, so I can't see how you're going to narrow, how you're going to widen that. Come and talk, to, have a look at the plans with us. I'm sure we'll be able to show you how they'll be increasing the number of lanes inbound and English providing. You know about English Street? I do know about English yeah. Street. Can I ask that anything that's not in relation to this, we have a chat about after the. The, the meeting? This, this what? Just, you're, just, you're just talking about Micklem Road, eh? Yeah. Micklem Road and Gladstone Park noise walls in particular because I, everyone here may be interested in English Street. Um, if we had another 10 minutes, I'd be happy to hold everyone up, but I'd rather anyone that would like more information about English Street, please stay back and we'll explain as much as you need. But let's complete all of the questions. Perhaps one more with respect to the Gladstone Park walls and Micklem Road interchange. Just on the freeway side where you're putting the new walls up, are you going to be replanting the trees? Replanting the trees? Any? Any there, at all? There will be some landscaping and there will be some space to uh, plant some more trees, but it won't be extensive because we're taking up some of the land to build the, the new carriageway. So, but there will be some. And again, um, when we come and talk with you, we can show you those landscaping plans as well. Okay. La this is the last question, and then we'd love to have we'd love to have a hundred more, but after we close the session, please. Because we're not very far from the opening going to the airport and enter to come to Are they going to be because there's so much space? Are there going to be extra line there behind us? Or? <coughs> I'm not sure where you're talking about. Can we look at the plans yes. with you after this? Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. We're really uh, pleased with the number. We were uncertain how many people uh, might have a strong interest in this and it's really fantastic that such a large number uh, do have an interest in what we're doing, um, how it's going to impact you. And, and the message that we'd like to give is that um, please come and talk with us or Rob and his team about anything in relation to the job and in particular anything that might be impacting you and your particular property. Thank you. Please hang around and ask as many more questions as you like.